All right, today's topic is 2.2, finding the square root of a function. Uh, that's on page 78 to 89 in your text. Our curriculum outcomes, uh, we only have one today. And that is to demonstrate understanding of radical and rational functions with restrictions on the domain. The key thing today is the domain. Lesson objectives, to be able to sketch the square root of function when given the original function. To be able to identify the location of any invariant points. We talked a little bit about those and to be able to determine the domain and range of the square root of f of x when given f of x. So, let's take a look at how a graph of the function f of x equals x compares to its square root. So right here I just have a, a graph of both f of x equals x. That's just a plain old straight line going right through 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, et cetera, et cetera. And on the same graph, I've graphed uh, what we call x to the power of 0 0.5, which is x to the power of half, which is the same thing as the uh, square root of x. So as you can see, there are two points that don't change. There's that point right there, and there's that point right there. And every other point, if we take a look at the blue function, the original function, every other point is found by simply taking the square root. So up here, it has a height of four. If I take the square root of four, I should get a two, and I do, okay? So every point on the red graph is just the square root of a point on the blue graph. So if I take the square root of one, I get an answer of one, because the square root of one is one. If I take the square root of zero, I get an answer of zero. Notice that we have no red graph underneath the x-axis because when you take this you cannot take the square root of a negative number so that is a restriction on the domain and the range so how do the domain and the range compare well on the original graph it could be graphed anywhere so the domain is xer which we've talked about before and the range also happens to be yer but on the new function, it can only be x is greater than or equal to zero. And as a result, y is also greater than or equal to zero. And I said, are there any invariant points? And that, yes, there are. There are two points right here and here that are invariant. And that's where the height, so f, where f of x equals a height of one and where f of x equals a height of zero. Now let's take a quick look at this little bulge right here in between zero and one. And so when you have to think about um, taking the square root of a height that is less than one. So for example, if I'm taking the square root of 0 0.36, which is somewhere around here, if I take the square root of 0 0.36, I get a result that is 0 0.6. So only when you're taking the square root of a number that's less than one, but greater than zero, is the result, oops, that shouldn't be a square root sign, is the result actually a bigger number. So that's why this graph bulges on top here. So where there's a height of 0 0.36, I take the square root of that, I get 0 0.6. If I take the square root of something like uh, 0 0.81, I get an answer of 0 0.9. So 0 0.81, height of 0 0.81 is somewhere around here. My answer is actually higher. So that's the reason for that little bulge there. All right, an example. Uh, sketch the graph of the square root of the following functions and state the domain, its domain and range. So here's our first function. It is f of x equals x squared minus four. So in order to draw the square root of this function, which would then be x square root of x squared minus four, we need to just first find the invariant points. So here's one invariant point. That's where the height is zero. And right here is where the height is one. There's a second invariant point. On the left-hand side, there happens to be two points that are also invariant. And that's where the height is zero and the height is one. We just learned that if we take the square root of a number between zero and one, we get a higher number. So there's a bit of a bulge here, which means there's also a bit of a bulge coming that way. 
And now we take some height of some points, some numbers that we do know, like a number like four. If we take the square root of four, we get an answer of two. So when I take the square root of four, that means the new answer would be two. Likewise over here, taking the square root of four, new answer is two. So here's our function, looking something like that. So you're gonna try and draw a smooth curve as much as possible. And of course, the original function, the blue function would continue onward, um, but we just have it cutting off at six. If we could get to a height of nine, then wherever the height was nine, when we take the square root of that, we'd get an answer of three. So it asks us to state the domain and range. Well, the domain is all the X values of this function. And this one's a little bit tricky because there appears to be two pieces of this function. So using the right notation, we say that x is going to be greater than 2 because it's everything to the right of 2. And x is less than or equal to negative 2. So everything to the left of negative 2. And then at the end we say x e r, which means it's all the numbers that are greater than 2 and less than negative 2. The range happens to be everything that's greater than 0 because our graph starts at zero and moves upwards in both cases. So our range is going to be y colon y is greater than zero y e r. Now, one of the main things you really need to get out of this lesson today is that you can't take the square root of a negative number. So sometimes your square root function, like this one is x squared minus four, the square root of x squared minus four, may not exist in certain places. So for this example, it doesn't exist between negative two and two, but it does exist to the right of two and to the left of negative two. Second example, we've got f of x equals two times the absolute value of x plus one. So again, we start with finding our invariant points. Now there's only one of them in this case because there's only a height of one in one spot. Nowhere does this function cross the x-axis. So there are no uh, points where the height is zero. And now we just start taking points that we know, like a point with a height of four right here. Um, and it gets, when you take the square root of that, it becomes two. Up top here, we've got a height of nine. We take the square root of that, it becomes three. Likewise on the left, height of four, take the square root, we get a two. And a height of nine, take the square root, we get a three. So if we can connect all these with a nice smooth curve, we will get the general shape of the square root of two times the absolute value x plus one. Now its domain, we're talking about it, how far it goes from left to right. Well, it's continuous, which means it doesn't, there's no little breaks in this graph. So that is gonna be x e r. For its domain and its range starts at a height of one and goes upwards so the range in this case is y is greater than or equal to one y e r and i should throw in a little y colon there so by looking at the original function you can now sketch square root functions no matter how um, similar this may be to something that we've sketched before or if it's something that might be totally new to you, like the square root of two absolute value x plus one. All right, in summary, to find the graph of the square root of a function, simply take the square root of all the y values of all the points of the original function. So you just need to know what the shape of that original function is. That means that the invariant points will be the points that have a height of zero and one since when we take the square root of zero, we get zero, and when we take the square root of one, we get one. And since you cannot take the square root of a negative number, wherever f of x is less than zero, which just means where it's below the x-axis, the square root of f of x will not exist. And that means the domain and range may change from your original function to your square root function. You just have to uh, use some common sense and uh, and see if when you take the square root of a number, if you can actually get an answer or not. And that wraps it up, but we've got an assignment on page 86 to 89.
Good luck, and we'll see you tomorrow.